Peter Chris. Yeah, I think that's why uh, our manager, Bill, did that. You know, it was like maybe the Beatles' White Album or their Sgt. Pepper, you know, it's when they finally showed their versatility. I mean, when Harrison finally broke out and did his thing, and Ringo finally did his thing. Uh, we're doing it now, and I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to show it. I mean, it's going to... It's time, man. We've been doing Kiss albums for six years, and uh, now we've got to, we've got to show everybody there's more talent in the band than just that style. And you're right, a lot of kids just dig the show. Half the times I don't even know if they know what the hell we're singing about or what we're playing about. With Beth, they really listened. I mean, because it did make the top ten. I did want a big award for it. Uh, they're going to listen again now. I think it's going to make our audience bigger. <laughs> Yeah, well, it is New York. I mean, because I played, I played clubs like Trudy Heller's and the Metropole, and I played with Joey D for a while doing the Peppermint Twist. And uh, there's a song that I do called uh, "I Can't Stop the Rain," and I open it up in an echo chamber, like I'd be in a subway in New York, and I go, uh, "This is New York," and it is very New York. And I did have, I did some tunes in New York City, but I did the rest out here. And what I was afraid of was LA musicians thinking, oh man, they're so laid back, and let's take a health salad break, and you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to really get no kick-ass music from them, and they're not going to play real New York City for me. But I was fooled, because Vinnie Poncia, my producer, uh, is from Brooklyn, and he grew up in the streets also, and he got musicians that really played very streetsy, very, very, very New Yorkish, which I needed very bad, because I'm from New York, and I'm proud of it, I'm really from Brooklyn, but... Yes, I am. He's, uh, how can I say it, extremely bright. I mean, one of the brightest. I mean, I've worked with a lot of producers, but uh, he set my drums up in the middle of the studio and set the musicians around me. And he was the only producer I've ever seen, instead of sitting behind the board inside the room, playing it cool, sits outside. And he also arranges, plays every instrument, sings. He sings a lot of the songs you heard, he's singing on them. And uh, he won a Grammy with Leo Sayer. And he, he worked with uh, Richard Perry, who was a genius. And uh, when I met Vinny, and I set up that way, I instantly got respect as, a, as an artist. And he didn't, never told me how to drum. Never once said drum this way because he knew I, you know, what I, he, knew, he, he respected me. Instantly I respected him, you know, and he was like, you could do it, man. Uh, the key's too high, let's try this key. Uh, this song should be sung a little quieter. Why don't you just take it easy? Don't put all your energy in at once. Uh, I'm learning how to run a board differently. We're working side by side. It's a very close relationship. From New York, there was a guitarist called Elliot Randall, who I worked with in the early days. Elliot's one of the best in New York. There's a lot of them. I can't think of all their names. Uh, there's like uh, Bob Como, who played uh, synthesizer piano, and Richard Gerstein, who played on piano in New York. There's, 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 there's uh, Bill Bodine, who played bass. Uh, I used the Farragut Brothers, who Vinnie worked with on a lot of albums, so Harmony. Uh, three bass players, three piano players, uh, the horns and strings. I've used three black girls in New York, three black girls out here. So it's, uh, there's a lot of people there. It really is. The only other song I did from anybody else was Bobby Lewis's Tossin' and Turnin'. And I always liked it because I have insomnia. And I can't sleep at night. And it's true. And, and uh, I related to it. And I used to do it years ago. And I thought of, and Vinny came up with it anyway, and he said, the song has never been done only once. And with your voice and my arrangement, let's redo it, man. And it's a great tune, and, and it is. I love it, you know. I couldn't sleep at all last night. It was so, such, so true, man. And it reminds me of New York, and I did it. And the other tune, uh, You Matter to Me, uh, I don't know who wrote it, but he brought that in for me and rearranged it. It's the only two tunes I'm doing from somebody else. All the rest I've written myself. Uh huh. Which hasn't been. If you think about it, the sound is the sounds have changed so much. I mean, like now the Bee Gees are in, and disco is very big. I mean, I thought disco would last for a year. It's the biggest thing happening, and and the song "You Matter to Me" is very disco. So I, I did it. I did disco to him, only my way. It's an old style that we know about, 
that I brought back. And to them, it'll be a new sound all over again. I mean, music is a circle. Clothing is a circle. Everything's a circle. It comes back. I want to bring back that era when Sam and Dave, you know, uh, Soul Man, all that Motown was really big then, you know, and Andy Supremes and the Shangri-Las, and it was really a happening era. And it was good dancing music, and now dancing's back. Yeah, that says it all. It's true. Because it, it, it's time now. I think it's my time to do that. You know, I've waited and waited, and, and, and uh, I was eating my heart out because this music was in me so long. I was dying to do it and dying to do it because I know they're going to accept it. I think they're really going to get off on it. Yeah, it's it's going to be a it's going to blow mine. My movie's coming out, the uh, NBC two hour special, which was our first acting debut, which was weird because we never acted before. And it was actually dramatic and lines and really getting into characters and all. So that's going to come out and four solo albums. So it's going to be a very heavy month for us. And now and then we're working on we want to do another motion picture because uh, it's only going to be TV. We want to do a really movie motion picture and do a soundtrack for it like help or a hard day's night and then we'll probably do a three-month stadium tour next summer and by then we'll be probably we haven't been around by then for probably two years so kids will be dying to hear us and by hearing these albums they'll be dying to hear these songs so it's gonna be great that's one thing we did at the Beatles then that's I think we're maybe the first band ever to do that probably I think we are to do that when I don't compare us to the Beatles, because I love the Beatles, I mean, they're my favorite band. But we are a phenomenon, and, and we're the only group that, like the Beatles, sold lunchboxes and radios and buttons and buckles and all that stuff, and no, no other band's done that, and we have the largest show that's ever been put out. And we do cause insanity and, and kids go crazy, you know, and I haven't seen that since the Beatles. And we're the first New York band to become a supergroup. No New York band has ever become a supergroup, nor sold out the Garden Three Nights. I'm really proud of that, very, very proud of that. And uh, it'll go down in history. I, I, don't, I don't remember any band from New York except for the Rascals, and they weren't even as big as us. But they were great. They weren't a phenomena. Kiss is a phenomena. I mean, we really are, and I'm proud of it. And it's scary. I don't like to think about it a lot because it scares me because I don't believe we're that big until I get on the ramp and run up it and hit the stage. You know, like Tokyo, you know, we, we sold out six nights at the Budokan and broke the Beatles records and they didn't even know what we're singing about and they're fainting and going crazy and it's, it was like, I felt like I was Ringo Starr actually and it was a great feeling, you know, especially uh, being from New York, no, usually New York bands don't have a chance, you know, we never did. It's always English groups of the big groups. So I'm really proud of that. I really am. And doing four solo albums and still being in Kiss is, is great. I think it's really going to prove, it's going to blow a lot of minds. It really, really is. Probably more than I even realize. From Peter's album, Don't You Let Me Down.